What's up, no? The ball chick? Oh, yeah, she is still loose. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Her name's like Cynthia or some shit, right? The ripoff 11. Gotta watch the whole episode over. That was a really good season finale. <laughs> that was powerful. Bro, I definitely had, like, fucking Rick and Morty get buff and beat up Nazis episode, bro. It was like Office Space when they was fucking up the printer, man. Or the copy machine. I can't remember which one. Dude, Stormfront was out here on that bullshit. It, like, I legit... The minute they introduced this character... Remember, I have never read the comics, right? The minute they introduced this character, I'm like, man, this character's fucking bullshit. This character's a jerk. I already knew it. Buff Summer and Rick, yup. Oh, what? You said they squashed her head? Holy shit. Come on, try hard, black guy. I just realized that's a spoiler, bro. What if I wanted to read that? Come on now. But still, I'm, I want to read it because I want to know... I want to try to understand some of the things they changed on a deeper level. I really want to know why. Like, so apparently Stormfront was a guy in the comics. I feel like I was a more like, Is a guy in the comics? I mean, I think that's the move, right? Because I, I feel like the the movie, they, they're having like a follow-up show. It's like a spinoff of The Boys. It's not like The Boys season three, apparently. Apparently, it's like a spinoff. You refuse to read the comics. See, I'm glad I've now read enough comics and adaptations to not be, you know, so critical. I'm telling you right now that I have definitely used to be that way, but now I, I have a different understanding of it. Yeah, apparently, like, this whole Miracle Man thing, like, it has something to do with the Miracle Man. Or... I can't remember the name. I like the comics. So, Try Hard Black Guy says, The Boys Show is better than the comics, and I read the comics. I like the comics, but sometimes the writer writes like an edgy 14 year old you know that happens a lot to the things that we read and then we get older and you start to see like the holes in it like hey man that's actually kind of fucked up that happens or it's just whack or whatever the case may be and that is garth ennis garth ennis like to do that kind of shit yeah i mean like that's how i feel about the watchman i feel like the watchman reading it uh watching the movie and watching the show is three different experiences in all honesty right like it's three different experiences so I feel like I still want to read it only because I want to see. I like to kind of go deeper and figure out like what the inspiration is. Like I'm, like I like to know. The comic comes out of left field real quick. So, who's read all of the comics? The show is vastly different. Arc rates. You won't really spoil yourself. That's good. That's one thing I will say, man. Like a lot of people talk about like adaptations and stuff like that from comics. But I feel like when you give some writers, like, content like that, like, they're very good at adapting it for more people to consume. Kind of like what I was just talking about with the MCU stuff and them talking about how I was talking about, like, time travel and different universes. The same thing, I feel like. Uh, now it's kind of to the point where people, long as it's something digestible that you can swallow, it's gonna be a lot easier to take. So now, like, this is the thing I've been saying for years. You have all these comic book stories and all these video game stories that all you have to do is give them, like, it's, it sounds easier to just write a story for Mortal Kombat than it actually is without it being, like, a tournament movie. Like, it all sounds well and good. Like, the intention is pure. But it's hard. It's really hard to take something from, whether it be written, or like from an anime and make it something that is going to be consumable by everybody who watches it or just for like mass uh, enjoyment, right? It changes everything. Healing Factor is a top tier power. That spinoff better be about Kimiko. Yo, Kimiko was fucking one of my MVPs. No, apparently there is a spin. Well, there, uh, the spinoff doesn't have anything to do with the boys, but they kind of give you this thing where they're like, Hey, there's a, they're making uh, a team and it's going to be backed by the government, right? The spinoff is a ripped off X-Men. That's what I heard too. I mean, I read it and I was like, oh, that's just the X-Men. Yeah, it's apparently based off of college kids. So is it going to take place in the future? Because if that's the case, either Vod's doing this right now, right? Either Vod's already doing this right now or they're... Like, the, the series, it's like a flash forward. And it's Ryan, I guess. I can't remember the kid's name. Ryan is in college, right? 
No, nah, probably present. Vod owns the school. Actually, that makes sense because they were raising him, so they already knew about it, right? That makes sense. No, nah, no, nah, I would just assume. I actually would just assume it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Cindy was in it, right? Is that in your arc rates? Is that in the book? That story about the school where they own and they just groom superheroes? Apparently, the super pornos were fully shot and they're thinking about releasing it. No fucking way. Butcher is like, he's like a need to know, I'll lie to get it done kind of person, right? Butcher off the hip is pretty good, though. Butcher off the hip is good. Who want to see big black noir? If they released that, that would be hilarious. Yeah, I still have it. I actually wore it outside the other day. That uh, that shirt I got from the boys event. So, but, so they're leaving a lot of stuff on the table, though. So obviously we're going to get that next show. Are we going to get like it side by side? Is it going to be like a boy season three? Right? And then the show runs alongside it. He chokes on the dude's almond joy at the end of porno. <laughs> How is it that Marvin came on un unharmed after the car flip that's true that's definitely true my man just got out and like yo let's run it i mean maybe you know mother's milk has seen some shit he's been around but i liked it though i really liked it though it it definitely i could see where why and would have better writing than the comic though yeah i could see how that that is though all the comics, man, if you go back and, like, read them again, sometimes, like, they're just so outdated in, in some instances that sometimes it's unrelatable. Yo, Gil Toss want to know, that dude with the Luffy penis, is he in the porno too? I'm only asking for Gil Toss. The only reason I'm asking, Gil Toss asked that question, I feel like I can extend that. Mo Mopichu would like to know as well. Mopichu, inquiring minds want to know. If I get that information, I'll pass it along. <laughs> that would be wild as fuck. <laughs> what if that guy is just a porno guy? It's like, look, man, I just want to make pornos with my Luffy penis, man. That's all I want to do. And they keep calling me a bad guy. Because I have long penis, does that make me bad guy? Yeah, there was a lot of... There's a lot of subtle uh, undertones that they were aiming at, right? Um... Stormfront talks about how active people are, uh, basically talks about racism, right? And how people agree with her, but they agree with the vision, but they don't like the word Nazi, right? So basically that's like a hit at saying like, there's a lot of people out there that are like sleeper on some racist shit and they don't even know it, right? And at the end, it, it shows that like, that there's writers conscious enough to say that there are people in positions of power because even though um stormfront is not like a government official she had influence at that time and her negative agenda just bled right into exactly what was already happening kind of like fed the hysteria already and they were using that which is all very telling of where we're at right now in the world right like as of right now you know exactly where we are because all of that shit hits personal. They said in 2006, they had a bunch of Trump references. And I'm sure we can all, I said Trump, they had a bunch of Bush references. But obviously we know what those references are now to being in position of power and kind of like using that kind of fear mongering to steer people, you know? Dog, they had a PewDiePie nod? A PewDiePie nod, bro? Come on. That's fucking, that is so meta. The fact that, you know, you have somebody that has this platform and these subtle nods to racism, right? Like this hidden racism. Like this show literally just pointed at it. And there's people that still refuse to believe that that's a thing. You can take something, make it extremely personal where something can relate to it, where someone can relate to it like myself. Put it in the show and people still will refute it. Right? And even her saying, like, just pointing at uh, A-Train, saying, like, he's something about, like, he's one of the smart ones or something like that. They spoke about uh, this cult getting tax cuts because of their dirty dealings. 
with someone who has the agenda of using these superpower people for a bad thing. Like, all these things. These are all kind of like subtle nods at things that are kind of influenced by real life scenarios at this point. And then you have like all the, one of the things I really liked about The Watchmen is that they had a really cool like overarching story and they had all these really interesting individual characters. Like you had Rorschach, uh, you had uh, Cowman or whatever the fuck his name is, you had uh, Dr. Manhattan, you had Silk Spectre, you had all these characters that had their different views, right? And even though the story was about this big overall plot, you had these different characters' attitudes that fed into it. And that's what The Boys is, right? And I don't, I mean, it's not as deep as The Watchmen, right? It's not in this media form, right? Like, I will say that, like, just based off of, like, the movies and stuff, I feel like they go into, like, the, the thought process of some of these characters, like, slightly. So... Edgar, Edgar was the yeah. That's what she that's what she was talking about. My bad, my mistake. Yeah, uh, I know Seth Rogen is one of those people who is behind the helm of this, and he's actually doing more stuff like this. Uh, actually, I heard Seth Rogen has a hand in the Sandman that's coming to FX. Like he's doing it's like I think he has the same role in all honesty. Yeah, he did the Preacher. He's doing one. He's doing Sandman. He did Preacher. He did this. That's really cool. Let me find out Seth Rogen is like on some sleeper comic, super comic book dude shit. Which I wouldn't be surprised by, but... So no, like there's a bunch of uh, subtle nods. Um, the influence of the media on people. The fact that Stormfront like met her quote unquote demise at something that turned around against her. Kind of hints at like the whole Trump thing, right? Like him being on Twitter him being like super active on social media and like it coming back to bite him because of fact checks and stuff like that right kind of like the same thing they were kind of hinting at with Stormfront right they also another thing about Stormfront is like they hint at the racist overtones of where this character began and how it was kind of systematic in a way as in racism in a way like they do such a good job of intermingling all these themes and then putting it on a large scale story, right? 